the human race is integrating the technology in more and more ways. In fact, this is already taking place. It's time to start envisioning what a better version of yourself might look like, with the emergence of custom prosthetics that will make us stronger and faster, neural implants that will change how our brains work, and new senses and abilities that you've never thought of having. So start dreaming of what a future you might look like. Some call it transhumanism, whereas some call it cyborg. Perhaps you have seen cyborgs in films such as Star Wars, Justice League, The Terminator, and so on. However, there is a fact that there are some cyborgs that exist in the real world. And in today's video, we're going to talk about some of the scariest yet unbelievable cyborgs that exist in our world today. So make sure to watch this video till the end. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon for the latest updates on the channel. With that being said, let's get started from the basics. Our planet has been blessed with a single, intelligent, self-aware species, the humans, for thousands of years. However, considering the rise of intelligent machines and the likelihood that this will change in our lifetime, maybe as soon as tomorrow, currently this intelligence has been used in a hybrid form of the organism that is a combination of biological and technological components known as a cybernetic organism, or cyborg, in the field of information technology. People usually imagine cyborgs as being mean creatures that combine the best of some human features and advanced technology in a robotic body so that they can interact with others just like it is shown in the movies. However, you do not have to work your way up from a movie to get in contact with cyborg-like features or characteristics or abilities. As mentioned before, it's generally considered that a cyborg is a combination of organic and mechanical parts of the body. There are some scientists who disagree with this statement. But this list is extensive and includes people with cochlear implants, cardiac pacemakers, and even people who wear contact lenses. This argument is valid in a sense. The human body is augmented by technology, and the two work together to improve the human capacity. One of these real cyborgs is Kevin Warwick, a cybernetics expert who associates himself with, but he can't deny that he is a cyborg, or was one. Warwick was implanted with a 2.5 cm long radio frequency identification RFID chip in his arm in 1998. In those days, it was considered risky, even reckless, to do such a thing. Even so, he went ahead anyway, creating a media circus as he demonstrated how the chip enabled him to be traced remotely via a computer, allowing him to open the security doors at his University of Sheffield lab without touching them. Four years later, despite warnings from the surgeon, he had neural interfaces implanted that allowed him to control a robotic arm on another continent and communicate, nervous system to nervous system, with his wife Irina via electrodes in her arm. As Warwick reminisced on how he first felt the pulses of her transmitted signals in his finger, he said, That was the most profound thing I have ever done. Warwick was eventually able to remove his implants, but he still remains, for some, the original cyborg. For others, such tampering with the human body is merely a logical progression of what has been happening for thousands of years. Liviu Babitz, the co-founder of CyborgNest, a company that manufactures sensory enhancement devices based out of London, says that humans have been integrating with technology ever since we started shooting at bears with arrows. He asks, isn't an arrow an extension of your hand? Babitz believes that we have all evolved into cyborgs, though he admits that the advancements in technology are becoming more intimate now. Additionally, if a permanent implant is too much of a step for you, then Babitz's company also makes wearables for people, such as the NordSense, a device worn next to the skin that vibrates to notify you that you are in magnetic north. According to Babitz, it's not just a compass, it's a whole new way of sensing the world around you. In the same way, just like your regular biological senses, the North Sense always works, allowing you to constantly be able to sense where you are in relation to the world around you. The way he describes it is that whenever you face the magnetic North, you know you're experiencing it. According to Babbitts, once you do that, it starts to embed into your life just like your smells and colors do. It adds fresh information into your memories, such as where you were at a particular time. Although the North Sense device can be worn discreetly under clothing, the enhancement device used by Barcelona-based cyborg artist Neil Harbison is much more noticeable. 
Harbison was born with grayscale vision, and his antenna, originally an attachment, now an implant, allows him to hear in color. It is a microchip in the back of his head that converts color frequencies into vibrations and sends them through his skull to the eyes. According to Harbison, the antenna was never meant to be a tool for fixing anything. It was merely meant to be an art project. He says that while studying experimental art, his professors stressed the importance of pushing the boundaries, so it came as being an artistic challenge to him. And it became a life project for him. Warwick wrote about Harbison's implant in a 2020 paper about superhuman enhancements. He sees Harbison as on the verge of being superhuman, especially since he can sense beyond the visible spectrum into infrared and ultraviolet. Warwick says, now he's got an appreciation of the outside world that humans don't have. There's also an internet connection on the implant. Harbison is planning to sell access to his head using non-fungible tokens, units of data that could be the next big thing in digital art. He said, you'll be able to send colors to my head, so anyone that buys me will have permission to alter my perception of reality as well as receive the colors that I'm sensing right now. While such projects show we can potentially modify the brain, there's a more direct way to get mind-altering effects. Put the implant in the grey matter. That's the goal of Elon Musk's Neuralink venture, which wants to create a wireless implant that will make it possible to access the internet with your mind. Researchers at Neuralink recently announced they had gotten a monkey to play Pong with its mind by accessing its motor cortex, the part of the brain that controls movement. Sounds impressive, right? Now, Neuralink plans to make paralysis treating gadgets, and Warwick thinks along the same lines. He reckons that we'll be able to patch over the breaks in the spinal cord within a decade. Moreover, moving next to another cyborg, we have Jesse Sullivan. In May 2001, Sullivan was employed as an electrical linesman and suffered a life-threatening accident. He was electrocuted so severely that both of his arms had to be amputated due to the serious injury that he suffered. This, however, led him to become the world's first bionic man. He was offered the opportunity to replace his arms with robotic prosthetics through the Rehabilitation Institute of Chicago, which he gladly took advantage of. After having a nerve muscle graft, he was fitted with a bionic limb that allowed him to walk. The person can control his prosthetic arm using his mind. For example, when he thinks about lifting an arm, he contracts certain muscles in his chest instead of the muscles in his original arm, and the prosthetic arm interprets that contraction as an instruction to move in a specific way. Additionally, he is also able to feel the temperature as well as the amount of pressure he applies to the object. Next we have Nigel Ackland. He was a precious metal smelter until he had an industrial blender accident at work. This resulted in severe crush injuries on his right forearm. After six months of operations and infections, he decided to amputate below the elbow. Over the years, he tried several prosthetics, but he ended up with a B-Bionic 3 hand. It helps him grasp even delicate objects independently. By using his forearm muscles, he controls the arm. His range of motion is amazing. He can move each finger independently to grip objects or even pour liquids. Next, we have Cameron Clapp. Cameron lived the California teenager lifestyle. He loved to surf, skateboard, and hang with friends until his life-changing accident. During 9-11, when he was 15, he wandered over to some railroad tracks near their house and passed out after drinking with his brother. Sadly, a train passed and he lost both legs and an arm. Then he got fitted with two prosthetic legs controlled by his brain. He's now an athlete and an amputee activist. And that's it for today's video. We hope you found the video interesting and useful. If you enjoyed the video, then hit the thumbs up button and share it with your friends. And do not forget to subscribe to the channel. We'll catch up later. Peace.